WrestleMania 40 is here. Almost. I mean, there are going to be a few more matches that will get announced, but because it is just around the corner, it's time to put on your nerd caps, sit in your nerd chairs, and join me, the ultimate nerd, as we try and book this thing, and then obviously get it massively wrong. Let's go. So we will start with the big stuff, because of course our night one WrestleMania 40 main event is going to be Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes taking on The Rock and Roman Reigns. Then we get to night two, where we get Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the Super Duper Mega Undisputed Championship. And of course, the rules could shift around here, depending on what does happen on Saturday night. So in terms of our two evening WrestleManias, this is the first time where we kind of have one match that influences the other. I like it. Now, the most obvious thing we can do as well, which is why we should do this, is have The Rock and Roman be successful in that tag match. So then when we do fast forward to 24 hours later, you can have all the shenanigans and you can overbook these things like crazy. Sometimes that just makes all the sense in the world. Don't ask me why, it just does. It also means we can be there going, oh, how is Cody Rhodes going to overcome all of this? Because Jimmy Uso will be there and Solis Co will be there. And who else knows from the Bud line? When all of a sudden, we can merge the narrative we have been telling for the last couple of years because Cody's Avengers can show themselves. And this could be a Seth Rollins, it could be a Kevin Owens, it could be a Sami Zayn. I mean, the tribal trip has pissed off a lot of people. Why wouldn't they want to come out there and sock it to him? Now, this is where we do have to take a quick detour as well because I think all this may tie into another match. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. That's right. Now we do have a small curveball because recently CM Punk was like, oh hi, I'm going to be at WrestleMania. So that gets me confused. But a big part of me, this part right here, is kind of starting to think Drew is going to win that World Heavyweight Championship after assistance from the bloodline. I mean, that would just mean that Rollins has extra sadness on his shoulders because he can be like, oh, if I'd only stopped them on night one, this wouldn't have happened, which is why he does re-emerge for that main event because he's like, damn it, you line of blood. Now I need to kick your ass and I'm doing it right now. Now, hey, that guy just happens to be Cody Rhodes. The punk thing does make me think twice like Celine Dion though. Because if somebody is going to help Drew become the champion, maybe it could be him, even if it is by accident, because then McIntyre has to come out on Raw and be like, well, you know, I did win that title, but that guy I hate, well, he helped. I mean, Punk can even do this on purpose if he wants to. It's not like he likes Seth Rollins either. In fact, he hates that guy. So I think that's very much dependent on what the forward plan with CM Punk is. I don't think he's going to be able to be back too soon because of his tricep injury, so you don't want to go too far. And of course, the other positive for the bloodline helping Drew is on that occasion, when he does come out to do his big raw promo, he can just ignore this totally. Because as we do know, while he does tell the truth, he's also become a massive hypocrite. All these bloodline attacks also do tie into this big main event on Sunday, obviously. Because now, given the last few weeks, I cannot figure out what WWE is going to do when it comes to The Rock and Cody Rhodes. Because I was convinced that Dwayne Johnson was going to be a mole in the bloodline so that we could end WrestleMania with Cody and Dwayne dancing around together. But screw that, <laughs> these two have cut such good promos on each other. Even if it never actually happens, we should store that away in our back pocket in case The Rock can come back or he finds the time. I need to see that fight. Either way, though, I do think The Rock needs to be somewhat responsible for screwing over Roman Reigns. Because, of course, then when we get to SmackDown, the Tribal Chief can be like, what were you doing, supposed cousin? You just dicked me over. Because, look, you think we're not going to do The Rock versus Roman eventually? <laughs> of course we are. It will probably be at WrestleMania 41. You know Dwayne Johnson. He likes to plant those seeds a long-ass time out. I get there is a lot of overbooking in there as well, as already mentioned. But we do have a lot of masters to serve here. Because every single person that has been involved in this storyline, well, they have to get their comeuppance. Otherwise, why did it last so long? I do think ultimately, though, as long as we do see Cody with that championship when WrestleMania comes to a close, then everyone is going to be happy, apart from those few naysayers that hate everything. But also, it will give you that warm and fuzzy feeling in your tum-tum. We all seem to have forgotten about this. That's the point of WrestleMania. It's meant to culminate when you go, oh, I'm so happy. You don't want it to be sad, do you? Again, there is an answer to that. I don't want to talk about it. Going off that point as well, I guess we'll throw it in here. Because there is a contingent that is all like, no, Cody must lose. And Seth Rollins should screw him over. I'm just going to make this very clear. What is wrong with you? I mean, this is like watching a Disney cartoon when Scar just goes, ha ha, and he stabs Simba right in the face, or Gaston gets a shotgun and he blasts the beast's head off. I mean, it can work sometimes, but ultimately, do you want to know why some conclusions are obvious? Because it's the obvious thing to do. We also kind of toyed with this at WrestleMania 39, and in retrospect, I think WWE did very well with it, but you don't want to annoy your audience too much, and by going, ha ha, he didn't win again for the second time, 
or you're just setting Cody Rhodes up for failure. And you shouldn't be doing that. He's the hottest white meat baby face they've had for ages. We should be lighting a fire under his ass. I also think it would be a massive help for Roman as well, because when he does lose his championship, not only can he start portraying a brand new character, but it also opens a new door for him to tell new stories. I mean, if you do do it correctly, all of a sudden, a few months down the line, he can become a baby face, and all of a sudden, he has a bunch more different opponents that he can go and work with. I mean, he has gone through everyone. I just don't think you want to miss the optimal timing, and I know people go, what about Hulk Hogan's title reign that he needs to beat? No, he doesn't. At this point, it's just numbers. And he's already in the top five list. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. No one's going to take away his flowers. But there is actually more to this as well, because when you do run through this card, you could be a mega geek and go, wait a minute, WWE could actually change every single title should they so want to. You do want to keep some bullets in the chamber, though, because, again, you do have Raw and SmackDown to book when WrestleMania is over. That's why I'd go up to Rhea Ripley and say, listen, Rhea, you're going to keep that damn title. I still think Becky Lynch should win it down the line, maybe at SummerSlam. But if you do do this and surprise everyone, the Rhea Ripley that we know now is going to become an even bigger star because, once again, she can walk out on Monday and go, ha, 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 what did I tell you? No one can beat me. I'm the nightmare. It also means Becky can start doing something after Mania as well, and there's a bunch of other programs you can jump into. I don't think it's going to affect her, really. She's Becky Flubbing Lynch. She, too, is a megastar. It also leaves the door open for Bailey to defeat EO Sky for that championship because Bales deserve her WrestleMania moment which is exactly the same for one Sami Zayn. He can become the Intercontinental Champion, and this is basically another Roman Reigns situation. Gunther has held it for long enough, and even if he does get defeated, if in a week he was in the main event scene fighting for a World Championship, nobody would care. He's just too good. It also means finally Sami can get a proper run on the main roster with a singles title, and of course, who's already waiting for him is Chad Gable. I want to see that feud. I also do find that it makes the United States Championship very interesting because, of course, it can go one of three ways. Either Logan Paul retains it, or we give it to Kevin Owens, or flubbing Randy Orton. Now, I can understand any of these because Paul is a one-of-a-kind talent that we should keep pushing. Kevin Owens is so underrated and so undervalued, and before he does call it a day, he needs a run as the World Heavyweight Champion or the WWE Champion. And when it comes to Randy... I mean, he's already a bona fide Hall of Famer. So if you give the US title to him, well, in 2024, we can start doing with that championship what we did with the IC title and Gunther. Well, this time we give it to Randy. Got it? Good. If you wanted to make the argument that right now, when you do look at the US title and the IC title, the IC one is a little bit ahead. Yeah, I'd agree with you. But maybe it's time to start focusing on the other one. You also don't need to over egg the pudding here. Just take what we did with the ring general and paste it all over the Viper. That sounds weird. It would also very much be a situation where the man is making the title and the title isn't making a man. But once again, because it is Randy Orton, if you treated this in the right way, you may even get to the stage where it can headline a pay-per-view premium live event. That should always be the aim. There's more connections here as well because we are going to have brand new tag team champions. Mostly because I believe the reason we are doing that ladder match is because one set of titles is going to Raw. The other one is going to smack her down. It just seems like the easiest way to end this thing in the sense that Raw team grabs one and the SmackDown team grabs the other. And while I definitely would give one to the awesome truth because they deserve it, the other could go in any direction. I mean, maybe give it to Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. I also think that those teams don't have to hold either championship for a long old time. And again, if 2023 was the era of super duper long championship reigns, then I think you want to change a little, a little bit in 2024 just to remind your audience, well, you never know what's going to happen. But definitely don't make that noise. I also think it's a really creative way to do this. And look, I'll be the first person to hold my hands up and say, I don't actually like it. I'm much more of a there should be only one world championship or one tag team championship. Otherwise, when you're talking to non-wrestling people, they're like, what do you mean there's two world champions? Like, yeah, you just got to deal with it. But to be fair, you know who screwed that up first? Boxing. Outside of this, LA Knight should be AJ Styles, just because I think there's more we need to do with LA. And when it comes to Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso, you got to give the nod to Jay. That's no offense against Jimbo, who definitely does not get the credit he deserves. But out of everything the Bloodline did do, turning Jay Uso into a mega single star was one of the best things. So let's drive up this momentum. And to be honest with you, we've got a lot of time left this year. At some point, he should be getting a championship. I mean it. There, of course, will be more matches announced as well. We have to do something with the women's tag team titles. But I'm a bit worried about this at the moment. Apparently, Oscar is injured. Ruh -roh. And the main reason that would suck is because nobody wants to be hurt. But also, the women's tag team championships absolutely need to be defended on WrestleMania. We are still rehabbing these things. 
we got to shine a spotlight on it. So I hope if those ones do change hands, we actually give it to a proper team. A lot of people we've just thrown together. And actually, when you do go through WrestleMania 40 on paper, and I mean this from the bottom of my tootsie toes, I think it has the potential to be one of the best WrestleManias ever. And look, trust me, as a man who has recently gone through every single WrestleMania for another video that will be live soon, some of them are terrible. Don't mean that in a horrible way, but overall you kind of scratch your head like, man, that went in a really weird direction. So if WWE does get everything right here, then I think it could be totally fabu. I mean, ironically, it does have one big story tying it all together. For the love of everything, we have to finish that story. Why has everybody forgotten that a story is meant to have a last chapter? But yeah, all things considered, I am very excited about this and hopefully I have got my booking right here. Otherwise, I look like a bigger geek than I already am. But you know the most important thing. There's a comment box down there and I need to know what you think is going to happen at WrestleMania XL. You can also click the video on the screen, which is me talking about more WrestleManias, because why wouldn't you want that in your life? Like the video, share the video and subscribe, but mostly just sit there and start going. I'm so excited. Otherwise, what is even the point of watching wrestling? Don't be a negative Nancy. Be a positive Pete. See you soon.